next. But before we can be at him, let's quickly run down the list one more time. Number 10, Jerome Lane from Pitt. Number 9, Southern Cows, Harold Miner. Number 8, Darvin Ham of Texas Tech. Number 7, Michael Jordan of Tar Heels of North Carolina. Number 6, The Diesel, Shaquille O'Neal of LSU. Number 5, Maryland, Stevie Francis. Number 4, Dominique Wilkins of Georgia. Number 3, Vince Carter of North Carolina. Number 2, Phi Slamma Jamma's Clyde Drexler of Houston. And the number one dunker in college basketball is... He brought an art form to Duncan. He's the guy who's six foot four that could fly. Man, he can glide like that and still had a 40 inch vertical. Man. He'd dunk it like that, you know, and like that. You know, he, he was dunking on people, through people. He had good strength, good bounce, and he had the throw too. I think all the kids growing up, that's who they wanted to be. He's absolutely, in my mind, number one. Meet. Dr. Duncan Stein. When I was a kid, everybody had posters. And he had like a, a Frankenstein, but it was Dr. Duncan Stein. Anybody who was called Dr. Duncan Stein, you know, he could fly high. <laughs> How he got the name, I, I didn't know. Who gave him that nickname? Dr. Duncan Stein, a spinoff from George Clinton's Dr. Funkenstein which was brought up by my brother, Michael. He was a big Parliament Funkadelic fan. Remember, they had the character of Dr. Funkenstein with George Clinton. Yeah, so he was Parliament Funkadelic all night long. In the 70s, unfortunately, if you couldn't dunk, the Luau Cinder rule was still in effect. We had to hold the ball over the rim and drop it in. But within a couple of years after that, uh, Daryl Griffith comes along, Dr. Duncanstein, and he not only could give you the flair and, and obviously had the elevation, but he was allowed to slam it. But Dunk was reinstated my freshman year in college, which was exciting for me because it was like uh, you letting a kid out of the bag. He, he looked like he was trying to show everybody up, like, hey, I'm gonna show you guys you never should have you know, banned us from dunking. He could do so many spectacular dunks. I mean, he could just be going down the floor next thing. You know, you're all anticipating, OK, what's he going to do now? You know, what's he going to do? And I think everybody got excited about that. You could feel electricity in the whole arena. It's an adrenaline rush, you know, very exciting, you know, especially when you're on a breakaway and you're about to do something creative out of your repertoire. You know, the whole spotlight of the whole arena is on you, and they want to see what you're going to do. And uh, once you execute that, it's, it's, it's a great feeling. He could do some amazing dunks out there on the court, being 6'3". And not only that, you got to remember, he could not palm the ball. He would take the ball with one hand, and he would pull it up and let the ball kind of drift underneath his hand to get above the rim and then dunk it. You got to think he's had two deficiencies there, but he overcame them all because he can jump in his hang time, 48-inch uh, vertical. It was amazing. Check me out, I remember playing at St. John's in Madison Square Garden, and the pass was underthrown on an alley-oop from the wing. And Jerry threw it to the left side of the basket, and Griff was on the right side of the basket. And I'm thinking, as he's in the air, how's he going to get to that? And he actually ducked his head under the basket, caught it, and dunked it back over his head. Caught it, on, and just threw it over my head and dunked it. You gotta have a lot of creativity, spontaneous creativity, because it'll happen just like that. Having the presence to know where the basket is, and even when the, the pass was way late, I mean, he amazed us all. He was completely disrespectful of the <laughs> law of gravity, and the rest of us had to abide by it. Griffith, for some reason, was uh, immune to that. Every category you could come up with, vertical, uh, creativity, fearlessness, I don't think there was anybody better. I'd rank him in the top two or three that's ever done it because he did it without having a hand that would hold the ball. He was more amazing to me than any of them. Nobody could dunk it better than Daryl. And everybody on the top ten is going to be fighting for that number one position. Uh, but, you know, there can only be one. So whatever I, wherever I fall, it's cool with me. You know, I mean, just to be a part of, of, the, of that and to be a part of the guys who are, are a part of the, uh, the top dunkers is, is, a, is a thrill and an honor. Can you still dunk? No. Don't even try.
No. My, my warranty on my legs has expired. <laughs>